So being a lawyer, it looks very easy, okay? You're going to college, you're becoming a uh, lawyer, you're trying to prove yourself that you're a bona fide student, and uh, going to the court is too easy. But when you confront the client, who is likely to face a serious prison sentence sitting behind you and you are in front of the judge the stress that you go through that time it's mortifying so becoming lawyer is not so easy the tax becomes very difficult for those who don't go to the court but they think that becoming a, a business lawyer is much more smart Becoming a business lawyer is a kind of a class also. So instead of going to the court, rather you think, I will be a business lawyer, sitting in a, uh, uh, a tall uh, story building with a beautiful tie and suit. Looks different, but the situation is also worse modifying in that situation. You have to say whether particular contract to be signed between two parties, your company and another company, it's perfectly okay or not. Because the CEO, the chief executive officer, will not sign that contract until you say, okay, it is perfect. And if there is a problem subsequently, you will be the one who is to be there. So he signs the contract because he believes on you. He agrees to shine and he takes risks to shine the document. Not because he knows or she knows, but because you know. And what will be the problem if there is a uh, mistake? If the contract does not defend your side subsequently, then you need to explain. So it is not so easy for lawyer always to say, okay, go ahead and sign. So there is a talk. When the time of shining document by two executive officers at the table comes, lawyer goes to urinate in the corner. This is what is a talk. So what they said is like, uh, at the time of shining the agreement, lawyer is not present at the always absent. The question, the, the talk suggests that it's not easy. You become a judge, probably you think that it's too easy. <coughs> but when you shine the judgment, and at that time, either you are causing harm to an innocent, you're releasing or criminal or an offender who might go to the society back and then cause more serious crimes or you're putting the man or the woman in the jail and his entire family will be destroyed so you're at that point possibly might be a destroyer so the line between you is not very space okay the line the road is not wider for you so that you can drive this corner or this corner is very narrow road you have to drive so if you turn a little right dash or turn a little left the dash so this life is not so easy as you think so you need to be sincere so as a uh, as a law teacher what I often think is that we are teaching a lot of students as a bona fide teacher we think this is our responsibility the danger i always think is like if we are not able to prepare student to think life seriously then they're going to kill a lot of people that's one other reason it is said that a medical doctor kills one person by mistake a lawyer kills the entire society by wrong argument. 
So ethics begins from the very point that how you prepare yourself to be a bona fide professional. The fundamental principles of professionalism therefore is to address the crisis within yourself. It is not possible to be a perfect lawyer without transforming oneself in past as a bona fide, intelligent, creative, persistent, and productive, honest individual. You need to be very creative. Each case you defend in the life, or you judge as a uh, court, or the advice that you uh, give to your client in the component would be different. The industry or the issue that you have been dealing today would not be the issue in industry dealing next to you. So every issue you are supposed to deal in your life is unique and different. And this is uh, a situation which demands to be very, very creative. You need to generate arguments by your mind. Mind is therefore very active, very cognitive. But you will not merely think. What you do is like you relate those knowledge to the practical problem and logic is generated by by uh, relating principles to the fact. Otherwise, the argument would not be possible to generate. So Google does not give you arguments to argue in the court. This sincerity, which is driven by the very strong sense of creativity in the mind, is very, very uh, important in professional life of life. It's not enough to be creative. It is necessary for you to be very intelligent. So intellectuality is very important because the system of law does not operate in vacuum. System of law works together with several other sectors of society and the life. So sociology comes in as a very important part of uh, guiding your argument. Economics plays a very strong role guiding your principle. The political side. So you need to be you, you need to be very uh, uh, diverse in learning. You need to be very diverse in thinking and you need to be very diverse in working also. So the same methodology and same practice does not work in every life. Even in different case, in the same day, your strategy might not be the same which you applied just before in another case. So this is very important. It is also not enough by becoming intelligent. You need to be persistent. There are a lot of ups and downs in life of a lawyer also. And also, every case demands same kind of uh, vigor for work. That means, if you do not have an interest of working without tire, tiredness, you will not work. And most importantly, and in what you need to be very importantly thinking is how productive you will be. All these three things, creativity, intelligence, and persistence need resources. If you do not have adequate resource to support you, you will not be able to uh, use these very important characteristics of a professional. That means you need to be productive. You need to be able to produce something better and higher in a very short period of time and very less period of time. So, how you use your time shortly and uh, efforts efficiently is very important. So, therefore, what is the very important first principle of professionalism is sensi. The sense of profession. 
you will follow the decency of profession. The decency of profession here refers that this profession has its own science. It has a very technical science developed over the years. There is a science in preparing your own. There is a science in writing. There is a science in deducting logic. Okay? There is a science to infer. So it is not a lawyer it speculates. No lawyer in his life does two things. Lawyer does not speculate. And lawyer does not conjecture. So lawyer never said that. Had not she been there? If she had not come over there, she would have been killed. So my client got a chance to kill her because she came over there. So it is mistake on her part. No, do not argue that way. Conjecture has no place. Speculation has no place. Assumption has no place. What has the place is the logic. So this is a very scientific profession. Lawyers choose their own shines. Okay. So don't believe that one day there will be a robot. You will put your program and it will create justice. No. Because system of justice is cognitive. It is producing the right. It is not producing the paper. So decency, maintaining decency of profession is very, very important. It starts from your appearance. We will discuss a lot on this theory on fifth year when you uh, study trial advocacy. Appearance determines many things. A very nice and decent looking of a lawyer in the courtroom creates a better ambience for just to think, to, for adversary to react and also for yourselves to think about. Your disgusting appearance is not supported. <coughs> Therefore, there are certain rules devised by the system of argument in the courtroom. One, we simply say it is so simple to back up, so flashy. Do not show up that. You are more a model rather than a cognitive mind. <laughs> what is very interesting, a lot of judges, a lot of lawyers have written uh, in their experience, in their book states. A flashy makeup appearance in the court immediately creates a psychology in the mind of the judge that she is less hardworking lawyer rather than a flashy woman. A flashy man. That's why court suggests that come to the court with your hair tie back. Do not use those lipsticks which are very extravagant and uh, irritating. Okay. Probably you think that your lipstick is so good for you because you look at your mirror and you think that it is good for you, but that might be very irritating. And your lipstick has nothing to do with you. Your lipstick has to do with you. Because you are not wearing lipstick for your mind. Very red, sparkling lipstick in a temple long days back. She said, and then the man on the side went out. I still think, why he went? What is the reason? This woman did never, ne never knew him, and he, because his her lipstick was irritating. So be careful to maintain your presence, moderate and intellectual. Same applies to the boat. Disgusting, jumps ridden beard. <coughs> okay. Even uh, people sometimes had be uh, uh, to sit down with this kind of people because it's it is uh, often shared in Facebook that the jumps in the dog's body and the beards. <laughs> this is important. The example in one case in a country, a lawyer with uh, a dress with uh, 
uh, very nice cleavage presented to the judge from the heart. Judge sees something different, but not the lawyer all the time. So the pains from off stop the lawyer to argue the case because there was not a place for this lady lawyer was supposed to argue the case with a very uh, professional uh, appearance but she was uh, creating a very extravagant situation showing a very nice cleavage so it was a case ultimately in the court she filed a case and the court said that no you cannot do that so lawyer therefore were always decent what does decent cloth? Cloth? Not expensive, expensive cloth. Very nice get up. Being simple does not mean that the every minute you have been speaking, the dandruff is falling down on your shoulders. This decency is very important. Because this decency refers to cleanliness. And metaphorically, Justice is something called clean. Justice is always cleanly thing. It cannot be dirty. If it becomes dirty, something cannot be called good or smart or beautiful. So that is the reason like uh, uh, in uh, Roman, in Roman uh, and Greek uh, civilization, the justice was portrayed as a beautiful woman. Okay? Because she is clean, she is smart, she is beautiful. That means the appearance is attractive. So justice cannot be unclean. So uh, what we therefore believe is like decency refers to cleanliness. Decency refers to cleanliness means the appearance is the fact of cleanliness. Your appearance suggests whether you're clean or not. Okay. Sometimes a people, even with a lawyer with a very nice beard, attained very well, washed, and then uh, nurtured or uh, reared in a very nice way. Looks beautiful. So having beard itself is not something called uh, ugly. But then how you keep it? Similarly, putting lipstick itself is not uh, uh, very bad. But uh, how much are you conscious when you're putting this lipstick on your lips? Are you aware that you're going to the court or are you going to the mat? You're not going to the mat. So the lipstick that you use probably in the marriage ceremony would not fit when you go to the courtroom. That is what is decency. Okay. Therefore, this is very important. So decency refers to cleanliness. Cleanliness refers to a better appearance. And the better appearance, therefore, refers to all those behaviors which are not extravagant. Therefore, we simply say, keep your hair nice, tie, keep your clothes not dirty, keep your clothes very well and clean and very nicely uh, uh, very nicely done and uh, keep your face not gloomy keep your face smiley okay don't be fall in a trap of stress in the court because if you fall in a trap of stress then you're not going to make a very good argument like Sunita rightly said one point is like if a woman mother with a sick daughter at the home goes to the court she will be thinking about the daughter not about the argument therefore you need to be very clean in the mind also so decency therefore is very very important thing so always think always think keep yours decent this is therefore necessary to develop a habit of being decent from the very time a book or a dog car who is trained to uh, uh, take pee inside the kitchen will keep taking pee inside the kitchen it grows even bigger so question is like how you train yourself <coughs> if you think that okay I will be uh, back when I am in the college 
but I will be a very good lawyer in the courtroom. You already disqualified yourself. Your decency is already good. You will not get it. Therefore, it is important for students of law to be decent when they are in the court. Create a habit. It's too hot. It's too hot outside. But I always wear the suit. People say that how can you do it? The body can be accommodated. Body can be adapted. So if I don't wear the suit, going to the college in the seminar, I feel very awkward. I cannot speak my mind, doesn't think. So being decent is also psychological. Because if I am not decent in my presentation, I am not going with a very good clothing in the seminar, I feel something awkward. Like, oh, I am not a, a very right person. Okay. That psychology, what probably people have been thinking. <laughs> See, uh, if you walk on the hill, if you walk on the hill, you wear the sports suit, people will like it. So context is also there. See, the foreign minister of Nepal said criticized so badly. Former foreign minister today criticized also. Like it was unusual for the foreign minister who has been attending ministers of the president of the country is with a suit and the uh, gold star uh, sports suit. So that is uh, very important. And what the former minister, for, foreign minister says is like that counts. And what he said is like maybe if it is a country which is not having very good, uh, uh, very good diplomatic relation with you. The officials of that country or your counterpart may think that this gentleman is causing embarrassment for us, that he degrades, that he antagonizes us. So he it, it shows our intention, they may think that way. So their approach to the delegation will be different. So these are things. This is one of the very important aspects of the civilization. Long back we were there. Nobody asked you uh, uh, what kind of clothes you will be wearing or uh, what the things you will be doing. Everybody was like, but civilization invented these clothes. Civilization invented these behaviors. That means if we live in that civilization, we should be live, we should be living in that civilization. We should not be pretending living in the civilization. So that's one very important thing. So take decency, it's a very important. Take decency is a practice, not as a thinking. It can be developed by practices, cannot be uh, developed by thinking. If you start behaving as a professional from the day, you will be a professional. There, there were some, some students in our college. The very first day they appeared with the beautiful same suit that others wear, but they always put it in the same way. Entire 50 years they did the same. And even today, they look so smart. Okay. So this is a kind of a, a, a very process of adaptation. If you learn to adapt, you look different. Let me give an example. One of the students of Kashmir School of Law became a very good lawyer, having a lot of cases because of her very good uh, opinions in the Facebook. Many of you often appear in the Facebook like <laughs> What does it mean? Do you know that? You often do this when you make a photo. Do you know what is that? It is exactly like I am a housewife. Housewife means I am the boy, I am the wife by wedlock, but my husband there are uh, for my husband there are many other wives. So I am the one who is the chief. So when you say in television that I am a housewife, you destroy your husband. What you mean is that he has a dozen other wife in the market. So when you do it, that means I had you. Wittgenstein's philosophy, you uh, read that book, you will find. Two girls doing it. On the way, he comes to the university and says that, what does it mean? But in Russell say that, oh, I don't like you. You are disgusting. Then he says that I will go and commit a suicide. Because they say that I'm disgusting. I should go and commit a suicide. This kind of thing. So there are a lot of this kind of uh, uh, shamanic behaviors which you are not supposed to do. 
and uh, therefore this essay is very very important the principle which you need to always take care of you i said that this uh, this essay needs to be evolved from the very basic uh, time that you have been nurturing yourself as a lawyer if you do it i do not guarantee that there is a very good professionalism in the next come but i definitely can assure you it will not harm you this will not harm you so therefore this thing needs to be maintained very good then uh, another principle is the principle of compliance of ethical courts there is another principle which suggests that uh, uh, you comply with ethical courts there are a lot of ethical court ethical courts developed over the last many hundred years a lawyer cannot bypass those ethical rules so what it said is like doctor treats patients therefore what is a basic assumption made is that the doctor is to be healthy to treat on other people one healthy doctor is not a doctor a lawyer has to represent the client and everything in the process of justice was in accordance with the law and the principles of jurisprudence nothing is astray in the system of justice the court has to follow the law the court has to follow procedures the court has to follow principles most importantly the court has to follow the jurors points he can say that okay i will compromise with it no it is this way. like a doctor needs to be healthy to treat on healthy people you need to be complying the principle and law more effectively and more promisingly to uh, defend the client so you don't follow the law but then you suggest that someone should follow the law <laughs> if you want others to cross from the zebra cross then you must have habit of crossing from the zebra cross but what is the system here in nepal and what is the practice and culture that we have is like you violate all kinds of laws but then you want every other follow the law what is the psychology that we have been so uh, seriously tormented in nepal is we think every other should change but not me what we think is like i am right one all others are bad so all others should change but i am in the right place the situation will be uh, just change if you start thinking that all others are good and perfect but weakness and problem is with me so you never invest on your development you never invest for your perfection what the time and resource you invest on is another destruction that's a problem of culture therefore i often have the uh, express my way there is somewhere in our culture something like that. this culture this i uh, indicated yesterday it's created by our pseudo knowledge because pseudo knowledge makes people involved he knows that he is not competent he is not competent but he see always present that he see it competent so you try to show that you are competent but you are not you know that so you become extra like that a simple person who knows that he is competent then he or she does not need to show outside so the person who is pseudo always tries to destroy other 
not to make himself awesome. Forget about others. What you need to do is to make yourself a perfect person. This is your consultation. So therefore, when you are in a legal profession, you play with the law. That means you work with the law. So like doctor needs to be healthy and only then he is competent to treat unhealthy people. So you're a lawyer, you need to be legally first. You mean you need to uh, follow the law first and then you can require others to follow the law. So this is what is very important. So when you are a lawyer, you need to be very conscious of your professional ethical court. The one very important principle which you need to remember when you're becoming ethical or you're complying with the course of ethics a lawyer has to do is uh, to have a privileged communication with the client. Your communication with your client is professional communication. And it is privileged. A privileged communication means that the communication you have with your client is absolutely secret. It is absolutely confidential. You even not allowed to share it with your husband and with your wife, nor with your son. So this is only between the client and the lawyer because your lawyer is your wife or your husband is not a lawyer. So this is a professional deal. So if you divulge the information shared by the client to you, to your wife, who knows that? You may have divorce next year. It's possible. So she might say that. He had this relation with the, uh, the this accuracy with the client. So this is what is called as like uh, it is absolute and it is only absolute. So anything shared by the client to you, it is absolutely confidential. So what happens if there are two lives? Yes, same rule applies. A client can share his or her idea to five lives. Yes, that's possible. But all five has to take it individually. What uh, they, they, they should be very conscious about is you are connected with the client, not through other lawyer. So everyone has to have a direct uh, communication, something like okay, five lawyers, one client. So everyone goes this way, not goes this way. So that is a privileged communication. Privileged communication is protected so strongly if you see probably the clause uh, section 45 of uh, uh, Evidence Act of Nepal. I'm not sure the section you take it. What it says is like, of information divulged by the client to the lawyer should not be forced to be extracted during the investigation. Even if you extract, that cannot be taken as an evidence. Even if you voluntarily share to the police, that evidence is inadmissible evidence, cannot be used for, uh, for the trial. Sure, but should not use it as an evidence. So this is inadmissible. So only these two privileges to be enjoyed by the people in the world is it's a special relation each between lawyer and client and wife and husband. So anything husband shares to the wife, the estate cannot compel wife to divulge it and the vice versa. So this is an exclusive privilege given by the law. Therefore, this privilege communication is absolutely protected. It is absolutely protected because if this is if this is not protected, then it seriously impairs the principle of presumption of innocence. If you not seriously take this uh, uh, court, then what happens? You uh, you you divulge. It's like the psychology of the people is that if a client shares 
it's information to the lawyer and lawyers libels us what is the common understanding is like it's true because it is his lawyer is that so that's what the reason like uh, Donald Trump's Donald Trump's lawyer who libels the information is now facing is now facing a uh, ethical uh, trial so you cannot do it because if you divulge this kind of information before trial takes place in the court, the presumption of innocence would be largely diluted and the judge would be very biased. Adversary would be playing in it. So the chance of uh, your client's uh, protection would be impossible. So take it as a guideline in the life. Anything you talk to the client is only between you. So this is more than a lover talks to another lover. So, therefore, you can make a metaphor that the client and lawyer's relation is more deeper than two lovers. So, don't take this advantage. If a client and lawyer are from the opposite relation, then this deeper, deeper relation requires anything, or permits anything to do that. That is another principle. <laughs> you always has to take another beautiful principle, and this is like a, uh, no professionalism is advertised. Because this is not a business. Lawyer's profession is not a business, it's a service. So as a service, it has some very core elements. <laughs> So there, there are some uh, principles now, like in America, a lawyer need not to wear a coat, black coat going to the court. He can go in any kind of uh, suit. A lawyer in America appears personally and uh, advertise that if you need our uh, best insurance lawyers in the city, that's me, come to me, I will give you a better service. because. America experimented departure from the basic principles of legal profession. So it considered legal profession is also a kind of business. So therefore they advertise. So American lawyers are not the lawyers like other. Okay. So in America, it is possible to have a big corporate person spending a lot of money to create a law firm. So in most of law firms in America, you find higher people, Bill Gates and others, can come together, can incorporate the law firm, and they can advertise that our law firm, the company, is looking for best law in America. We will be giving you the salary. This is the salary offered to you. So there are 300, 400, 500 lawyers working. So they are not lawyers, they are employed. They're working as an employee. So the case is afford. So what happens is like the company charges the fee to the client, not the law, not the law, not the lawyer. Therefore, the fiduciary relation between lawyer and client has already broken in the United States. So now what you find very interesting is like when there is an accident, the moment accident takes place, it's not the doctor who comes it's not the ambulance who comes to the scene first, but it is a lawyer's car who arrives and it starts dealing, okay, if you give this case to us, we will file the case uh, for the better insurance, okay, we have a very strong team, so they are called now changing lawyer, so in legal profession, like in medical, it is called ambulance to go and rescue the, uh, uh, rescue the victim, there is uh, another ambulance representing the legal field, it's called changing life. So if you go to all big hospitals in the United States, it's not the, it's not the, uh, something a uh, social council or uh, other service provider in the front line, but just very close to the reception of the hospital, there is a lawyer's office. So lawyers are there, okay, there is a count, so lawyer can go. And the moment accident, the person dies, 
they start negotiating and they start building the cause. So human life therefore has been completely converted into legalist mechanics in United States. Maybe that's the reason it has 2.7 million uh, people in the jails facing criminal charges. But except America, nowhere in the world this practice is there. All of the countries, the profession in the world including Canada and other parts of the uh, North and South America and Europe and Asia, we believe that it's a service. Traditionally, traditionally, Rome believed it is a benign service. So Roman law in the beginning also shared that lawyer should not be charging. Shared that lawyer should not be charging a fee. So they were like uh, pundits, okay? You give money to Puret when he or she, she generally is not, maybe in the days to come, probably. You, whatever amount you give to Puret is okay. But Puret cannot demand money. I spend three hours, so you have to give 1,000. No. So you are supposed to provide service like a Puret does. So in Rome, these lawyers were not supposed to look for money. So it was their social recognition. Okay? So that was there. Exactly. In our part of the world, uh, lawyers were called second sack. They were not called lawyer. Our system was a bit different. Judges were lawyers, and lawyers that we call today were called chicken sack. So that terminology is taken to medicine with inappropriately. What that chicken sack means is the one who logically dissents. Okay. So there are a lot of doctors who do not do surgery, but they are also called chicken sack. So in our system of court, when a case came, then the court asked for two logic. So that is the importance of NAB philosophy. These people were trained under this philosophy. So these two people were called. There were a lot of logicians. Okay, Chanakya was a logician in himself. And it was not the argument first. The lawyers put before the court. It was the judges, they briefed the case. They said the pack and they said what are the evidences presented and what witness had said and all this information was first ripped by Bichari, uh, that was called Bichari in the page, who knew law and fact of all. So he was therefore called Bichari, okay. So now even today you go to Bangladesh, we see a very common similarity with Bengali language therefore in which and the world. So if you go to uh, Bangladesh, like we call Nadis, they call Bichar Pati. That means a Nadis has to have thought. It's what is the linguistic uh, reflection. So after presentation by the court, what is about the case, the fact and evidence, then the two logicians were asked to give their logic. So one was supposed to say, okay, a woman that she saw the crime taking place. Okay? But this woman has a track record in the past having several fights with people. Another woman is very old but she said that she saw crime taking place but her eyesight is definitely in question but she has never told lie in her life now these two gentlemen have to argue with this evidence one will say this evidence is admissible another will say no this evidence is not inadmissible so they represent definitely the parties indirectly but they were not appointed by the clients they were appointed by the court it was exactly the situation in rome 200 years before the birth of christ when there was a first court, formal court was found in Rome, it was exactly, these two people were called in the court and they were asked to refer to the court, what is the law, and another was supposed to say, no, this is not the law. So they were called sick and sick, okay? So question is like, we took it service. Entirely for the last 2,500 years, this profession has emerged, it's a very winning profession with uh, service orientation, but not the business orientation. So, except American system, 
which recognizes it as a business, but uh, all the countries in the world take it still a uh, very serious service-oriented profession. Therefore, it's finally the region in America in 1975, it's about 27%. Say that American lives are honest. This is so sliding down now, a couple of years before the survey was that it's only hardly 7% people believe that American lawyers are trustworthy. They say that they are the money nation. So there are a lot of jokes about uh, uh, American lawyers. So one very important uh, joke told about American lawyers was that one day one man who was drowning in the pool, uh, in the side was a, a, a big tough. So people rushed over there to rescue these people who was drowning. And then there was another from uh, uh, the window watching down. And then somebody asked like, who is this? Who is alive? Then people got out and said that, put the other one open, open him. So there is a television program now in America, okay? That goes from law firm to law firm seeking jokes about life. Jokes about life have become very popular. But if you take it all the way, this advertisement is not necessitated or not permitted or not uh, allowed in other parts of the country. What does the belief is like? Your performance itself is the best advertisement. So what this every belief is like? So your decent career, decent performance is what brings the cases. So people know how to find out. You need not say that I am alive. Always are very careful about two things. Identifying the doctor who treats and identifying the lawyer who represents. So nobody will go so easily to a doctor. Okay. Probably the doctor himself looks for another good doctor like lawyer. Now. So this is a kind of thing. So advertisement is not there. So advertisement exclusively uh, not to so what it says is like not big sign doors even. So even in the car, like you can write your name and say that you're an advocate. Your office is in Bagbaja. Okay. But what it said is like it is requested not to make this card as a very colorful extra magnet. Okay. So this kind of thing are there. The third very important uh, principle is I already talked about yesterday, need not talk much. But very important principle also is like if this client decides not you. If this client decides not you. So when there is a fact, or the choice the client wants to go, it is the client. This is a need to happen. You should suggest the client that no. For example, probably there are a lot of clients often come to you in the early period of your profession, you become quite amazed. Like a client comes. And this client becomes already a very expert because before he gives you this case and go to the court, he has at least visited 10 lawyers already. And he talks with a lot of clients, the parties in the court. He stays a couple of days, he roams around the court and then he sees that someone is coming. He teaches all these tricks. This man already becomes a very, very perfect client for you. Like, People who have not emergency, who are not facing emergency but were sick for a long time, they already are doctor. Not one doctor, they are ten doctor. Okay, they go to Ayurvedic and then know what is the medicine. And they start asking a question of doctor. When doctor says that you need to be operated, and then immediately he says that who is the anesthetic doctor? Doctor, you invite when I am operated. And he said that dot 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 this. I think that anesthetic doctor is better. So exactly this is the situation. So what the client may say is like, let's do, let's file the case at the end of the limitation, the date of limitation. You have a 30 days to file the case, but it's just 10 days. Client may suggest that we should do it in 50 days. He knows what, what is the trick. But then, if you file the case at that time, already know there are certain procedures would be corrupted and the chance of the case being made in your favor will not be there so you may suggest no if we go late then we will miss this evidence this evidence will already be corrupted so we have to use this evidence immediately we have to brought this
this evidence to the notice of the court immediately. So if we wait for 55 days, this will be covered by the media and all that. The evidence will lose its trustworthiness and it becomes inadmissible. So we have to file the case immediately. So if there is a fight, it's not the client decision prevails. It is your decision. So at that point, say that. If you want to file this case in 55 days, I am not going to represent you. Please find the end of the bar. You can say that because your relation is, is a professional relation. It's not a business relation. You need always to be very careful. When you argue with the client later on, because we always think our case is between one people and another people. But sometimes the case is so big. It's millions of cases. It's millions of cases. I was dealing the Lumini airports debate the crisis and I was appointed by the Ministry of Tourism that time. And I, oh, I could not say the amount. <coughs> the amount, I never shared. And I shared that bill that I was negotiating with them. I said that when I share one lakh, you should understand that it is one. It's one aura, okay? Then I shared one lakh because it was easier to me. Because sometimes the cases are very, very complicated and you have to say all this kind of thing. So client's decision is very important. Legal, the procedure and all the practicalities, law involved, it's your choice, it's not the client's choice. But what is better and what is not better is chosen basically by the client. Therefore, if she wants to go to case or if she wants to go to petition, if she wants to go to the writ petition in the Supreme Court or she wants to go to the case and go into the merit, this kind of thing are uh, generally what uh, uh, the clients has to uh, be prevent. So take it very seriously. Don't miss it. So, principle of compliance of ethical courts, basically with these three fundamental principles, makes you a perfect lawyer. There are so many other courts, like judiciary rules and other, but they are more rules rather than principle. But these three things are absolutely applicable principle. Okay, they are rules as well as they are principle which career of lawyer needs to be guided. So it is not associated only with your relation with the client, but this is also part of your career to make a better lawyer with better lawyer. Another principle is uh, always you look to uphold the system of justice. Upholding the system of justice is another principle. You cannot trans the system of justice. You're not an agent in the sense that you work for your benefit. You earn salary, you earn fees, definitely. But what is a fundamental principle is you are representing the case for the sake of justice, not only for the benefit of your client. So a lawyer is a fees within the law of justice. So this is a metaphor you can keep. What happens to the fees if it always attempts to break the bone and get the water out? What happens? It's not harm to the justice, but you die. So if you tarnish the system of justice, if you discredit the system of justice, if you violate the rules of justice, it is not something called justice or abstract notion gets harmed. Therefore, it is not the institution, it's corrupt. 
but institution itself is weak. Some bad lawyers or some bad judges has largely victimized the institution of justice. So like you and me, the institution itself is victim. So how can you condemn the victim himself? The question is, how can we identify the person who is corrupt and we will blame, we will throw blame on that particular person, but we will defend the institution. So this is very important. Therefore, upholding the system of justice also means upholding the sanctity of the institution of justice. So you can criticize the police, but you cannot criticize the system of investigation. You can criticize the government attorney, but you cannot criticize the institution of attorney general. You can criticize politically prime minister, but you cannot criticize the institution of prime minister. Whatever bad prime minister you may have, but he is the prime minister. So individually, you can criticize his behavior, but you cannot criticize the prime minister. So if, if we take it, for example, you can criticize Shalendra Shamsharana, but you cannot criticize Shiv Justice. This is what is the basic notion lacking in our system today because the former generation of lawyer was not educated on code of ethics and principles of ethics. So they went to the profession without knowing what is the profession itself. You made a driver, you gave him skills to drive the car, but you didn't give idea like how careful he should be driving the car because you didn't tell him about the car its sophistication and its workability all but what you did is like okay you can drive so he didn't know how to drive so i can give you a metaphoric example of that long back uh, in 1996 i was working in Kathmandu metropolitan uh, city uh, as a chief legal advisor and then there was a car purchased by the former mayor in the garage so we we got to know that this car is not functioning for over six months and this car was BMW car brought from Germany that time its price was five crore looked so extravagant it was absolutely computerized you need not do anything okay it did everything the time you were supposed to change the gear it said that okay now you change the gear everything okay computerized totally so when you drove if you come closer to five meter to another car, it is stopped. When you are driving, you find a small ditch in front of you. It says that, okay, it's not the car. There is a the ditch. And if you continue, it breaks itself. So it got wrong. So they had to bring the mechanics from Germany for three weeks, paying 300 US dollar per day. Remuneration. So now the question. How would you use this car? Yes, perfectly you can use it, but the driver should be conversant with the system. If driver was trained, sending him to Germany instead of bringing these experts, then probably he would know. So after six months, driver was doing exactly what do it here in the car. Okay, they can do anything. Nepalese driver. Sometimes drive over the top of the hill. So they can drive anywhere. They can even drive on the tree, go up. <laughs> Car can be made like monkey. This is a kind of situation. So uh, to end this part, like principle of updating justice, is your responsibility. Which is Nepal's legal profession and Nepal's judicial system is facing a terrible uh, time. And I shared my conclusion written in my book, Nisan Kuch Obi Bekti, I have written very clearly that this is the violation of ethics caused by wrong legal education. So a wrong legal education, which we try to get rid, but unfortunately, another 12,000 in the same system have been inducted. Therefore, it is your responsibility to fight against that. Those who have been taught this way and they have been taught that way, if they would come to the legal profession again, then Nepal's legal profession will be destroyed. So this is a challenge.
principle of defending law is another very important. I gave a very important metaphor for you to uh, this principle. I said that the pieces should not break the bones. So, a justice is something like a pawn and you are on pieces, therefore, that relation is what you always keep in the mind to defend. So, principle of defending law, you work in law, okay, you are not the maker of law. So, this is not your responsibility to make the law. Your responsibility as a legal professional, not as a social engineer. Social engineer may attempt to make the law in advocate but if you are in the court you're representing the client or you are charging the client or you are charging that person something like that so you are a professional lawyer so professional lawyers responsibility is to interpret not to make it so when you interpret the law do not interpret the law therefore the objective of the law is this and what is the objective is again the justice in the end of law is justice that's what we say so do not interpret the law in a way that will destroy the system of justice or the judicial procedure or the judicial dignity or the legal profession or the dignity of profession so law should always be interpreted to uphold the justice to uphold the dignity of the judiciary and to uphold the dignity of the legal profession. So, don't try to give wrong interpretation or wrong meaning to the law. Okay, sometimes it is possible to do a trick and give a meaning. And finally, the principle of conscience. Many times a lawyer has to confront very serious stuff. Sometimes you need to decide whether you have to defend this case or not. Sometimes you need to decide whether you should suggest your client to plead guilty and then uh, convince him to uh, get rid of the punishment, bring a small punishment. Or sometimes your client is ready to plead guilty but situation would be very dangerous therefore suggest not to plead the guilty and defend his innocence a lot of this crisis will come sometime you have to take a very strong moral decision this keeps you to be a good lawyer 